Hi guys, thanks for joining me. This little tutorial is for the small seahorse template that we brought out a little while ago. This template was featured in the one of the broadcasts, I think it was the, not the show broadcast uh, back in, or event rather, back in March. And I don't know about you, I mean, watching broadcasts and stuff, that's great. But when you want to watch a tutorial, you just want to watch that. And I felt that having it done as part of the broadcast or having to revisit that tutorial as part of the broadcast, where there's sort of interruptions and I'm being asked questions and stuff, that it kind of sort of breaks it up a little bit. So I decided that what I would do is uh, the first chance I got, I would come back and start revisiting some of the templates that are in the broadcasts and doing dedicated tutorials for them. So it's sort of uninterrupted for you guys. So as I said, this is the little seahorse uh, template and you're going to need a few sort of bits and bobs you're going to need your felting surface obviously and I'm on my foam base and then I've got my flat mat with a felt topper I've got my 40 spiral and I've got a 38 spiral I do have multi-tool don't know if I'm going to be using that yet I'm being a bit preemptive <laughs> I remembered my all I always forget my all so uh, you're going to, if you're going to do a where is it there an eye then you're going to need a, a pokey tool probably some wire snippers again that will be for the eye this is a four mil sort of glass black eye we're going to need a little bit of glue and of course I've got my trusty pocket scale for weighing out the wall for the template that's everything that I'm going to be using I hope <laughs> So we're going to hop straight in and start making our little seahorse. What I've done is go ahead and weighed out one gram of your base colour that you're going to be using for your seahorse. And I'm using our spring green colour as the base. And then I'm going to be using leaf green and lichen for some sort of shading and accents but the leaf sorry the spring green is the one that I'm going to start with so this is it's a bit of a frilly template so there are quite a few little lumps and bumps that need attention and that's generally where I start uh, it's sort of around this and I think I say this in most of my videos now don't be tempted to try and stuff the template what we're going to do is break off very small little bits and put them into these little bumps so once you once you start also you're going to need to decide which way round you want your template facing usually and particularly with the flat mat the side that faces the mat actually comes out as a nicer surface but we are going to be contouring and stuff as well so it's not imperative at at this point if you were doing um if you were doing a seahorse for say a card topper or maybe even a fridge magnet then you want to make sure that one side is kept obviously completely flat we're going to be contouring one side, but then there's nothing to stop you from turning it over and contouring the other side to match. And then you've got something which is sort of more of a 3D little seahorse. So just some ideas for you there. The first thing I'm going to do is just start pulling off really, really small pinches. And I'm going to fold them so I've got sort of a bit of a rolled edge. And then that rolled edge is what I put up into the little bump. And again, another little pinch up into the next bump. And I'm very, very light with my needle. I'm not driving into my surface. I don't want these to adhere permanently to my surface. 
so just make sure you've got a you know you've got a good bit of fluff up into those little bumps and make sure you've got some frizz that overlaps you missed the top one up there so I'm just going to go back up there just bringing some of the fluff right up into that little bump and then very very lightly just a little bit of a felt to hold it in place and work your way where did I get to there work your way down the is it called a mane on a seahorse I don't know we'll call it a mane just work down each little bump on on his mane until you get to the bottom there. last one There we have it. Then I'm just going to go back very lightly and just make sure that I've got some good overlap of that frizzy bit on the inside there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work down and fill up his um, nose. So again, I've got my fluff. Any, any time that you've got a shape or a point that is like that generally I will fold because if you see the fibers bend round whereas if you stuff it into the template like that the fibers are going every which way so by having that fold edge you give yourself a good a good neat start so up into his nose with that rolled edge and then just bring those fibers into the template and I'm using probably just the first barb or two and I'm using my 40 spiral it is the one of the very lightest needles I find for laying down the fibres, it's absolutely perfect. You don't want a heavy needle. So I'm going to pull off a little bit more and just go overhang the template on the outside a little bit. Run up the middle. And then bring... that fluff into the template. So a little bit of a quick all over. And places like the very tip of his nose and these little bumps will need to be felted quite firmly. But don't make the mistake of thinking that to felt it really well that you've got to drive your needle in, you really don't. So that's the first part. This is sort of a little head bit done. Next I'm going to work on his wing. It's not a wing, is it? <laughs> his fin. Work on his fin. And let me just zoom in a little bit here. If you have a look, then it's barely attached to my surface. If you drive and you use too much of your needle, um, you'll end up with a lot of this very, very stuck to your surface and it'll be very difficult to get it off. But I'm just going to tickle that off. And you can see, I mean, it's all in pieces at the moment. You won't take your template off. <laughs> like I just did but I wanted to show you 
um, the sort of adhesion to your surface that you're going to be looking at getting. So I'm just going to spend a hot second just getting these lumps and bumps back into their, their right place. So let me just, and you do want just the tiniest of sort of tack to your surface. It really will help hold everything in place for you. But like I said, you don't want, you really don't want it to be um, welded to your surface. Okay, I think I'm just about back where I was before. Oop, get up in there. There, okay, right, back to his wing. Slightly bigger lumps and bumps on this part, so I'm going to use a little bit of a bigger pinch. And the whole idea is that we're going to get an even fill. I don't think even my pocket scale would weigh out the pinches. But what's important here is that you get a good a good bit in the lump and you get a good overlap. And we always start from the outside of the template and then we'll backfill to the middle. So again, just pulling off pinches and working all the way around. And you will get a feel for it. Some templates are easier than others. Um, there are a few which are a bit fiddly. This, <laughs> this is one of them. But it does make such a pretty little shape. And the template does have a wiring hole here. So if you wanted to, you could put him on a stick and stick him um, you know, in an arrangement. Maybe you're doing an underwater uh, theme or something on a bit of driftwood maybe and you can put a wire up through or a pipe cleaner sort of up through his body and if you're doing that lay down sort of the f you're going to need a little bit more wool if you're wiring and what I recommend is that the one gram uh, you maybe make 1.5 and you lay down the first sort of half of the wall and get an, an even covering with the first half then you put in your wire and then you put in then you cover it with the second half of the wall let me grab a wire and i can show you what i mean here so if you can see the wiring hole is lined up so that you can put a wire straight up through the middle there. This is a 20 gauge, so if you wanted a seahorse on a stick, then uh, a 20 gauge is a good, uh, it's a good sturdy wire for the weight of the seahorse. Uh, florist wires like needles, the higher the number, the thinner the wire. So the higher the number, the thinner the needle. So a 20 gauge is probably what I would recommend if you wanted to do that. You can put in um, most of your wool, then put the wire in and then glue it and sort of just put a bit of wool over the wire. That's another way of doing it. So let's go down into his tail. So when you're doing the tail part, generally find that 
where the tail sort of meets the wider part of the body that sort of becomes a bit more of a weaker point so we need a bit of extra fluff in there let's put that down and I'm going to grab another bit I need to turn my mat so that you can see this better so I'm going to do that rolled edge I'm just going to turn back a tiny tiny little bit and then that rolled edge is going to go in there we hope it is a teeny tiny tip on this one so take your time with it And then bring the rest of this fluff round. Once you get it in mostly, then you'll find it'll just pop round there a lot easier. And again, not driving, just using the first barb of the needle. All of the barbs will work so you don't need to um, you don't need to use all of them it takes a little bit more felting obviously if you're just using the first one but there we go so he's back in there we have this bit to fill now and I've still got all of this left. I generally find that I get down a layer and then I find the bits that just need back filling. So all the way around his belly and then fold that back in and that sort of folding in gives you a nice edge. And then the frizz blends out across the rest of the template. There we go. So nice and nice and light. Just a little bit all over. Just to get that nice and even. And then just see if you've got any. I've got a thin bit right there so I'm just going to add and do bear in mind obviously that we've not lifted this from the surface yet so one thing I would uh, suggest that you do is put an extra bit just over here and the reason for that is because you've got these tiny little nubs and you've pinched off lots of little bits if you don't have a good overlay it can all fall apart so I'm just going to put a bit over that whole piece and go up into each little bump right across his head and hopefully if I'm very lucky <laughs> that's going to help hold it all together so this is still very softly felted there's no um, no real firm felt on this at the moment so what I'm going to do is take off obviously if you were doing this as a 2d so if you were doing it on an actual uh, piece of felt because you were doing a, a 2d picture then you can obviously attach it uh, a little better but All right, tickle it off 
you don't want to don't grab and pull because you get a lot of distortion that way and you can see we've got our shapes really starting to get defined but it's not there yet it's still very very soft and very fluffy so I'm just going to work him back into the template and always put the project back into the template rather than trying to put the template over the project you'll find it will go in a lot easier just working down over it and easing it into the template it is a little bit of a fiddly shape so and all the way around to the tippy tip of his tail and now it's just going over it over it and over it and over it and really starting to sort of felt felt it down um, I've not turned my template over yet and if you've watched any of my other videos you'll find that I recommend that if you're having a side a single side that's facing you especially with the flat mat keep that towards the mat because if you look you've got all of these pitted marks where you've got the, the needle but on the other side, look how lovely that is. So if you ever want to have a, you know, a single good face. And I think that is to a large degree because of the flat mat and felt topper combo. Because when you're felting with this, when you hit that mat, you really can feel the denseness of the mat so you stop so you're not constantly driving fibers out the bottom of your project because nobody likes a fluffy bottom <laughs> sorry I do I do make myself chuckle a bit too much <laughs> so all I'm doing is I'm working over this and for speed, I'm going to use my, uh, my multi-needle tool. There's a little technique that I like to call a compacting technique, and it's tiny little stabs, just in a little circular motion, and you go over every teeny tiny little bit of the project, and you can see that it's, it does compact. Just do this in a little bit that you can see. main component with getting a nice smooth and neat finish uh, the main ingredient there is time I am obviously doing this as quickly as I can for you and I give it a little bit of a jiggle and that just helps it stop sticking to the mat but can you see how much that section there is now compacted and that's quite firm so what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on going over all of this. I'll speed up the video footage, but basically it is a rinse and repeat of just going over and over and over it until it is really firmly felted. so there we go there's our little seahorse and there's the other side that's been facing that mat look how lovely that is so what I would do now is I'm just using the very first barb of the needle and I'm going all over and you really do want to use a fine needle for this I'm still using my 42 spiral um, I haven't even touched my 38. I generally find my 40 spiral is... Did I call this a 42 spiral just now? 
I don't <laughs> this is a 40 spiral so if I've called it anything else completely ignore everything previous <laughs> so I'm I'm using my 40 spiral and I'm just going over it very very lightly and that's just going to tap back look at me let me get him out of here now look at that how cute is he little seahorse and I've still got that left from my one gram and look how, how lovely his little lumps and bumps are now if you if your lumps and bumps aren't quite as lumpy and bumpy as you want them once you've got it felted really firmly what you can do is you hold your needle horizontal and just go back and forth in the same place and you use all of the needle and again use a light needle for this and you'll find that it will let's see if I can hold it here you see how it's making that indent even more I tried to do this without stabbing my fingers but there so and you can do that you know, in all of these little lumps and bumps if you want to. There he is. There's our little seahorse. What you can do now is bring in some other colours. So this is our light green. No, leaf green. <laughs> we don't have a light green. So there's our light green and this is a lichen colour and yeah, now it's it really is just personal preference as to where you want to go with it. Um, I would pull off, I'm going to give him, we're going to give him a bit of a belly. Let's do that first. He looks like he should have a little bit of a belly. So I'm going to pop him back. take a second to pop him back I generally find that it's a good idea to have it in the template when you're doing any work as long as it's you know as long as you can have it in the template because any work will you know it, it will sort of push the fibers outwards so this will help contain and will minimize any sort of distortion from your pretty seahorse shape let's see how much have I got here Says, I'll just weigh him. Now I've used 0 0.8 grams in that. And so the weights and measures are a guide, they're not set in stone. If you use a little more, if you use a little less, uh, it, it's absolutely fine. They are just a guide to get you started. And also it does mean that your results will be quite consistent. So this is the 0 0.2 grams that I had left. I'm going to use this to make his belly. So I'm going to just pull it and stack it because I want a piece that's just going to fit in in his belly part. So a bit of frizz and just lightly tack it down to the middle then I want to put all of that that way because I want this bit of frizz to be on this side and then you'll end up with this sort of bump so I've tacked it down there very lightly bring it over scooch it back and this is where frizz is your friend because you don't want you don't want a hard line 
so in order to blend out into the rest of the template you want those frizzy edges I'm just going to go round and I want to bring most of it over towards this edge because obviously this bit is going to be uh, sort of the fullest bit of his belly so I'm just going to work around that edge bring it over blend that out down towards his tail now you can see I've got a bit of a line there you may want a bit of a line if that looks that doesn't look too bad a little bit more definition on his tongue you know every single one is going to look different you know your idea may be um, to make completely different colored ones you can make multicolored ones put them on a on a little card and send them as um sea hugs <laughs> i think that's cute so there you can see he's got a bit he's got a bit of a belly and then i think giving him a bit of a cheek as well let me just grab some more spring green color let's see what weight's that it's about 0 0.05. Uh, if your scales don't go to 0 0.0, then do 0 0.1 and then break it roughly in half. That might be a bit much, but I'll see. So again, I'm just going to tack it down. And then I'm going to tack down just in that little cheek area. Get my outline. Just take your time with it. Allowing that frizz to sort of blend out. I don't think that's enough wool. Okay, put in a bit more. And it is always, I, I think, a better idea to just add small increments. I'd rather add three small increments than try and add a bigger one and then find that I've got to tear some of it out of his, or, you know, tear some of it off of your creation. Always easier to add than it is to take away. And there we go. So he's got a little bit of a little bit of a cheeky bulge and a little bit of a tummy bulge and just doing something like that you know so there's flat and there's contoured and it does just add that extra little bit of dimension So I am going to declare that done and carry on felting for at least another five minutes. <laughs> Stop there. Okay. So that's him done. There you can see his little shapes. And then you can grab yourself some other colours. Let's have a little bit of light. Uh, I keep calling it light green and it's not light green, it's leaf green. There we go. Leaf green. <laughs> and like. <laughs> and I've got more leaf green than lichen, but... I'm just hand blending it so you just put the fibers together pull and stack pull and stack turn it 90 degrees pull and stack and you kind of end up with a coarse blend and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give him 
a bit of colour on his tongue and break that in half and the way that I would do this is just start with a few very light stabs but jump about and the reason that we're jumping about is if you just felt in one place like that all of the fibres migrate to that spot so we we'll want to start getting the fibres held in place all over and that way they don't all move to the one point so just jumping about will help you you know help them sort of stay in place and you'll have a much nicer spread so there's a few you can see on his tum you could do some little tummy rolls as well um, get a little bit of your your wool and actually roll it up like so and you can sort of you know put a roll there roll up another one put another one there roll up another one slightly smaller put it there and you can end up with that sort of uh, lined line draw I'm not going to do that I just want a little little bit of a colouring on his tum and on his cheek so I'm just going to add a little bit there too and it's really nice the difference that just adding that touch of a different colour You know, it doesn't look so um, plain and you know a block colour there we go so there's it's got a little bit of discoloration just makes him look a little bit more natural I think so there there's our little seahorse so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to finish him off by putting an eye um, I bringing my little clattering tool and I'm just bouncing so lightly over the surface and that's just going to help bring in and sort of compact down those you don't want to use this inside the template there's, there's not enough room you will annihilate your needles <laughs> of a shaping but you can see it's it's little colorations on him right I'm going to grab his eyeball so I've got myself a little sheet of greaseproof paper um, those who know me also know that me and glue <laughs> don't always see eye to eye Here's my little eyeball. And this is a four mil uh, glass eyeball. And I'm going to need my all. Move the paper a second. I usually just decide where you want his eyeball to be. And make yourself a little hole. It's I think I mentioned it before, but it's worth saying you can do this sort of bumped and contouring on the other side as well. And then you've got something that is, you know, uh, sort of more 3D. But it just helps having that. That's not where I want his eyeball to be. That's where I want his eyeball to be. It just helps having that base shape to build off of so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put his eyeball in there and just make sure that that's where I want it and I think that's fine so 
Okay. Let's see if the gluing gods are going to be kind to me today. So I'm going to put just a dot of glue. I mean, it's the tiniest amount, and I use gel, glue gel, gel glue, gel super glue. Leave it alone. <laughs> it's in. No, I don't touch it. No, there's. There you go. And obviously, it's stuck out the back. But I'm going to leave that for about five to ten minutes which in Sam world equates to about 30 seconds because <laughs> I have no patience with glue, which is probably why I end up stuck to it so much. But I'm going to leave that and just let that dry. And then all that we need to do is come back and nip that off of the back. So it has been maybe a few minutes. <laughs> Hasn't been five, I know that, but... I feel confident. <laughs> Famous last words. <laughs> what I'm going to do now is just nip that off of the back. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to get my wire cutters. I'm going to put them level and I'm just going to squish it very quickly and not nip. Nip. There we go. Cool. That shot off. And there there you have it you could use a seed bead if you don't have these um wired eyes uh you could you could use black felt and just felt yourself on a little eye um you know there are lots of lots of things that you can do uh with that so there's our sweet little seahorse and just as a bit of a sneaky peek, dun, 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 dun. we have a super size seahorse. <laughs> and this one, uh, it's not out at the moment, uh, at the time of filming this, um, but it is coming uh, later on in June. And we decided that so many of you loved the little, the small seahorse that we would make a supersized seahorse as we also have supersized sheep. <laughs> I see a lot of supersizes in our future. <laughs> so there is our small seahorse. So many things that you can do with that sweet little make and, you know, lots of potential there for aquatic and underwater uh, creation so please do feel free to share some of those pictures over on our Facebook group we do have a Facebook group uh, it's completely mad I forewarn you now that's www.facebook.com slash groups slash mums makery and if you haven't already please do subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, hit that subscribe button followed by the little bell icon that'll notify you when I upload new videos that's our small seahorse make so i hope you have enjoyed it thank you very much for spending your time with me and i wish you all a very crafty day mm -hmm.